and now just a person. From some school children in southern Jersey as they boarded buses, their schools were closed early as the storm begins to bear down. We have complete coverage of the Nor'easter, and we begin with Action News reporter Kathy Gandolfo live in North Wildwood. Kathy, your picture's jiggling because the satellite, the the, the satellite dish is is just shaking. It's a mess. That's, that's right. Absolutely everything is shaking down here. It is positively brutal, and the wind is absolutely the biggest problem. It is terribly fierce down here right now, gusting uh, up there, saying 45 miles per hour. I suspect it's much higher than that. Meanwhile, for the second time in a week, the rough surf is just taking a bite of the beaches and the bulkheads. This is how it looked in the Angle Sea section of North Wildwood during this afternoon's high tide, as waves from the turbulent waters of Hereford Inlet came crashing onto the nearby street. This is one of the worst ones we've seen. Uh, last week was a wallop too, but this is... Uh... The winds uh, seem to be uh, a little worse than we was last week. While some enjoyed the spectacle, everyone was taking the storm seriously. Special attention was being paid to evacuation plans should they be necessary. The flooding is probably the big concern, our senior citizens and things like that. But we are prepared. Uh, as of having the storm last week, we naturally are a little bit more prepared. Uh, we have National Guard trucks on the island, and they're ready to go. The eerie sound of a siren signaled high tide and served as a warning to move cars to higher areas. The same whistle will sound again at the next high tide during the night. One in the morning, so it's a bad time. Everybody's asleep and they're not going to know, so we're going to have to warn them. To keep children out of harm's way, the Catholic and public schools in North Wildwood closed early and parents thought that was a good idea. Most definitely, because once the water comes, it comes. There's no holding it back. I mean, after storm, after storm, it's been storms. So and then the water comes, it comes. Now, several evacuation centers have been set up, including Wildwood High School and the North Wildwood Community Center. Reporting live from North Wildwood, I'm Kathy Gandolfo. Thanks, Kathy. Now let's go a few miles north to Lisa Quintana, who's live in Ocean City. Lisa? Mark, the rain has been falling at a steady rate since 1.30 this afternoon, but the real problem here is the wind. I have an anemometer here, and it's been registering wind speeds anywhere from 10 to 45 miles per hour. Uh, this storm promises to get much worse before it gets better. The roar of the ocean was Mother Nature's way of saying this nor'easter has arrived. At high tide, many looked at the waves to get a better idea of how much punch this storm really has. What do you think of the ocean? Oh, it's magnificent. It's really awesome. I, it's a little frightening, but it's, it's awesome. It's really nothing much you can do is just let Mother Nature take its course. What do you think of Mother Nature out here? It's pretty awesome. Just by looking at the way the winds are kicking up, this is uh, this is pretty bad for down here. So, looks like a fun get ready because it's coming. Ocean City schools closed early so the kids could get home before the street flooding began. Last week we had a hassle with the flooding and it's difficult to get around. By three this afternoon, the usual trouble spots were beginning to fill. Flooding is a concern all along the coast. A Sea Isle City bar owner placed sandbags along the doors to keep floodwaters out. In Ocean City's south end, crews built dunes to protect oceanfront homes. Still, Libby Swenson cleared the patio furniture off her beachfront house, just in case those waves come crashing through the dunes. I think probably tomorrow is going to be the worst or starting tonight, but I thought I'd better be prepared. Now, I see they have these sand dunes here. Do you think they're going to hold up? No. I'm afraid they might not. Now, we were up by those dunes earlier this afternoon. The wind was beating down on us. The waves were crashing onto us. And this was all before high tide. So the people who do have oceanfront homes have legitimate concerns as to whether or not those sand dunes will be able to last for the duration of the storm. On another note, the Cape May Lewis Ferry service has been suspended because of the storm. Reporting live on the Action Cam, I'm Lisa Quintana in Ocean City. Thank you, Lisa. Now, let's go to Dave Roberts outside. The latest word from AccuWeather. Dave, how much, how long is this going to last? Well, it's going to last uh, right through tomorrow, Mark. The heavy rains were into it. Go to the satellite picture. This is what we were anticipating. There's the movement of the storm. You see the counterclockwise flow is moving northeasterly, and actually, radar will show it trying 
uh, at hugging the coast now, but trying to pull away to the northeast. There's action radar. You can see the heavier cells uh, just about moving into our area. Let's break down that mix for you within. Some areas to the north and to the west where they had colder air come in. Uh, you can see the western half of Pennsylvania there with some snow and then an icy mix in between. Right now, most of us uh, just getting this heavy, heavy downpour. All right, let's uh, check out our map now. We've got a map to show you where it's located. At the present time, it's located in Wilmington, North Carolina, as of about 5 o'clock today. We expect it by midnight to be uh, still hanging right on the coast at Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Then noon tomorrow, you can see it moving well off to the northeast around Virginia Beach, and then 6 p.m. Thursday, well out into the Atlantic. What does it mean for the shore? Okay, it's a nor'easter, windy and rainy. Right now, through noontime tomorrow, we expect the worst of it. Hopefully by about noon tomorrow, the system will start to lessen. It'll still be windy and we'll have some rain, but not what we're going to experience for the next at least 12 hours. A uh, flood watch has been posted, and uh, for the New Jersey and Delaware shores, they've got a coastal flood warning down there with a high wind advisory. Northeasterly winds, 25 to 35 miles per hour. The gusts anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour. And the flood watch has been posted for Atlantic and Cape May counties. Tides three feet above normal. There's going to be flooding. There's going to be beach erosion we're going to get it all this is the nor'easter that we've been waiting for and it is here it's a slow moving storm and once it uh, really hits the area as it's starting to do right now it's going to be slow to go we'll be back in just a few minutes and have another update on the satellite and also action radar that's the latest lisa hold on we're into it we will day thank you and as you know day the nor'easter is creating some very big problems farther south including hundreds of miles inland from the coast. The storm has dumped snow on West Virginia and Tennessee, knocking out power to thousands of people there. Along the Virginia coastline, several dozen homes that were damaged by last week's nor'easter are now in danger of being swallowed by this storm. And Virginia Beach is just one of the coastal communities that has been pounded by high winds and heavy surf all day. Along the outer banks of North Carolina, the fear is that more of the beach will be eroded by the destructive surf and wind. Three piers were wiped out by last week's storm. Inland, the storm has meant heavy rain for the Carolinas, with, of course, more forecast for tonight. And in Florida, the damage from this nor'easter is reminding some of Hurricane Andrew. In this neighborhood in the Keys, palm trees knocked down by the high winds were the villains. At least 85,000 customers are still without power today. Damage estimates are already in the tens of millions of dollars. And that is our storm coverage to the moment. Dave Roberts will be back with the latest from AccuWeather. And, of course, we'll have live updates at 536 and 11 tonight. Also, tune in to Action News tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock for your complete storm coverage as the Nor'easter churns toward the Delaware Valley. Two Philadelphia police officers were shot this afternoon in North Philadelphia by one of their own. Their wounds, not life-threatening, we're happy to report, but both were taken to Temple Hospital, and that is where Matt O'Donnell joins us live right now with the full story. Matt? Mark, the latest is that the two officers were treated and released from Temple Hospital about an hour and a half ago. We now know the identities of those two officers. The first one is Officer Jerry Torres, a three-and-a-half-year veteran of the force of the 25th District and Officer Sylvia Morales, a two-year veteran of the force, also of the 25th District. Both suffered minor gunshot wounds after chasing a car thief in North Philadelphia. Police say it all started at 1 this afternoon when they received a report of a stolen car, a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Patrol officers caught up with the car and the alleged thief in the 2700 block of North Phillips Street near 2nd and Lehigh and tried to get the suspect to stop. He fled the car instead and jumped over the fence into this alley. Two police officers caught up with the suspect. A struggle ensued. Police say a third officer arrived, his service revolver drawn. But because of the debris in the alley, police say that third officer tripped. The third officer accidentally discharged his weapon and the discharge caused a uh, injury to the two other officers who were on the scene. Police say when the officer tripped, the officer's gun fired once. The bullet apparently ricocheted at least twice. Officer Torres was hit in the hand. Officer Morales was hit in the legs. Police Commissioner Neal rushed to Temple Hospital to visit with the injured officers. He says both will be okay. Uh, all indications are that they're going to be fine. Uh, we're just waiting for x-rays to be done to ensure that there's no fragmentation as far as the wounds are concerned.
Once again, those officers have been treated and released from Temple Hospital. The suspect somehow suffered some cuts to his head. He was taken to Episcopal Hospital for treatment. It is unknown at this hour what charges that suspect may face. I'm Matt O'Donnell, live in the Action Cam in North Philadelphia. Thanks, Matt. Well This weather scope is sponsored by the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. This is a special edition of Weather Scope. Welcome to this special edition of Weather Scope. I'm Dan Atkinson in the Forecast Center where we continue to track a powerful nor'easter making its way up the eastern seaboard, battering the mid-Atlantic states with torrential rain, strong winds, coastal flooding is a threat as well as heavy snows inland. Let's take a look now at the advisories, the watches, the warnings that are posted now as a result of this storm system. First off, as you can see, there are gale warnings and storm warnings posted up and down the Atlantic coast, with uh, particularly from Paramore Island up to Merrimack River, Massachusetts, the uh, strongest winds expected there. Heavy surf advisories from Cape Romaine, South Carolina, on up to Fenwick Island, Delaware, with just a little bit of a break there at the North Carolina-Virginia border. Coastal flood advisories, and we will update you more on the flooding potential in just a moment. First off, we want to show you the precipitation, broad area of precipitation being produced by this storm system. Uh, the trailing edge is back in the Carolinas and Georgia, uh, light rain for the most part there, although there is some light snow falling over eastern portions of Tennessee and we'll be also looking toward the Ohio Valley where some of the heavier snow has been falling during the day. And uh, during the past 12 to 18 hours, or at least overnight, northwest Georgia got some snow thanks to this storm system. And the Weather Channel's radio meteorologist Mike Phelps captured these shots on his way into work this morning. He was in Varnell, Georgia, just southeast of Chattanooga. Mike captured the winter wonderland aspect of the storm, but for some, including motorists in the southern Appalachians, the snow has made for a real mess. Meanwhile, the system brought you very rough weather in Virginia Beach this morning. Strong winds produced rough seas and high waves. Gusts to 50 miles per hour were reported in the area. In addition, you were hit with lots of rain, heavy at times. The rain will taper off this afternoon, but winds will remain gusty. And it is gusty at Seabright, New Jersey, at the northern end of the Jersey Shore. And standing by there is Lori Geary. Lori, what's happening where you are? Well, Dan, just to kind of give you an idea of what it's like out here, it's about 39 degrees. We've got some rain now mixed with some sleet, along with the winds, which are gusting up to about 40 miles per hour. 
The seas are still packing quite a punch and the real test comes once again around 2.30 in the morning. That's high tide. Folks are hoping that the oceans don't go above the sea wall. Also, they're watching the Shrewsbury River, which is about a quarter of a mile across from us out here. We've got lots of homes and lots of businesses along the river. Folks are hoping it does not rise above flood level. Once again, we're under a coastal flood warning and a gale warning here in Sea Bridge, New Jersey. Back to you. Thank you, Lori, and we join you in urging motorists to be very cautious if they have to be out during those early morning hours those coastal roads can be water covered. We'll check back with you. Well, we're joined here in the Forecast Center by Colin Marquis. Colin, the meteorologist with the Weather Channel. And Colin, you've been watching this system very closely. And uh, how would you compare it with the Mid-Atlantic storm that we watched last week go They're up? They're actually the very similar. The track is uh, quite similar. Intensity, pretty much the same. It's a much more slowly evolving and slowly moving storm. So the end result is most people will see the effects for quite a bit longer than they did this time uh, last week. Well, as it creeps along, where is it presently as we look at this satellite view and what would be the projected path? Your eye is drawn to the swirl right off the uh, southeast coast and that's in fact where the area of uh, both upper level and surface low pressure located somewhere across southeastern North Carolina. It's going to take a track taking it off uh, to the east northeast in a very, very slow fashion. And pointing this out earlier, we have spreading winds aloft we call that an area of divergence in the upper atmosphere and that results in some pretty vigorously uh, rising air and that gives rise to some heavy rain and that's what's happening along portions of the northern mid-atlantic coast right now now this low is pumping in tons of moisture from the atlantic and uh, back over the ohio valley it's, it's riding over a pretty cold air at the surface isn't it certainly is we have a tremendous uh, influx of atlantic moisture in your right Dan, we have the cold air being supplied by this high pressure zone off in southeast Canada. And anytime you throw relatively warm air up and over uh, cold air near the surface, that's a mechanism for precipitation. That's what's happening. Going to continue to be the case. And where it is cold enough across parts of Pennsylvania, especially back across the upper Ohio Valley, those are the places that are getting socked with the real winter like weather. Now, we note here, Colin, the, the tight isobars uh, indicating the very windy weather that. Uh, we were just seeing, for instance, at Seabright, New Jersey. We have a report, incidentally, of uh, some wind damage at Berlin, Maryland, where uh, the roof was taken off the uh, car dealership, and these were non-thunderstorm winds. A little bit earlier today, we had wind gusts up above 70 miles an hour just off the coast of uh, North Carolina to buoy we look at out there. And probably uh, over the course of the next several hours, particularly from the Delmarva region up through and including uh, most of the coast of North, uh, most of the coast of New Jersey. We're going to be talking about sustained winds, probably in the 30, 35 mile an hour range, but gusts certainly could exceed 60 miles an hour. So we may see additional problems with some damage uh, because of these gusty winds right on through the nighttime hours into the first part of tomorrow. And the winds will be uh, increasing the threat for coastal flooding, won't they? We, we... Certainly will be. And again, we have to talk about even though we do have coastal uh, flood warnings in effect north of Ocracoke Inlet all the way up to portions of New England. I think the area of most concern is from the Chesapeake up to about the New York City area and the next go around for the high tide cycle and we just completed one in the last several hours would be along about uh, two to four in the morning after midnight uh, so early in the morning on Thursday and expect tides to be anywhere from three to five feet above average at that time. Now the major cities in the path of this storm are going to be getting uh, pretty windy weather as well as uh, cold rain, aren't they? They certainly are. Winds are already freshening from the east and northeast in New York City, uh, up about 35, 38 miles an hour at last check. Boston's still in the 20s, but throughout the course of the night, the winds will continue to increase both in New York and in Boston. And by the time we head into uh, the late night hours into the first part of tomorrow, gusts exceeding 50, approaching 60 miles an hour, certainly not out of the question for those two cities. Well, we see uh, it's certainly cold enough there in the Northeast, not as cold as it might be, but when you factor in that wind, your wind chill now in New York is 21, 11, the wind chill in Boston, things much easier to take over the Southeast, where we look at the uh, trailing edge of the, uh, well, actually the radar here. Uh, we have had uh, reports of heavy snow uh, piling up in parts of the Ohio Valley, haven't we? Certainly have, as much as uh, 8 to 12 inches or so in some areas across the upper Ohio Valley. The prognosis is not very good if you don't like snow. It's several more hours of snow, actually right through the night, thinking now light to occasionally moderate snow, so several more inches of snow to sit through for those folks. And snow to plan for on your drive to work tomorrow. 
And we thank you, Colin. Colin Marquis, meteorologist here with the Weather Channel. And if you're going to be away from your television set and you want to have the very latest on this weather system and what's happening elsewhere across the country, join us at our website, weather.com. And now we go to Mike Bono in the studio to find out what's happening elsewhere across the U.S. and get your forecast. Thanks a lot, Dan. Well, while the storm in the west has died down for now, a new storm is heading straight for San Francisco and areas north. Drenching rains could arrive as early as tonight. As we take a look at uh, the west coast, we'll notice that uh, things are really popping out over the ocean. The satellite photograph in motion is very dynamic, and you could see actually three advisories in effect. And along with the very strong winds, we do have heavy surf advisories in effect as well. Well, that's the latest on the winter weather update. We'll give you complete details coming at the top of the hour on Weatherscope on what's happening with this nor'easter and what's happening elsewhere across the country. Fresh Step neutralizes ammonia odor and freshens with every step. Okay, you win. Fresh Step. Fresher with every step. Exciting news for soft contact lens wearers. For dry, blurry lenses, Clear Eyes CLR refreshes your eyes and helps clear lenses. Contact lens relief. This is KYW News 3 at 6. It is nature on a rampage tonight. The Northeaster is pounding the Jersey and Delaware shores, and people are preparing for the worst while fervently hoping for the best. Good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Kane, and here we go again. The vicious storm is hurling itself with unmerciful fury at resort towns so familiar to all of us. News 3 is live in Avalon right now. This is a live picture. You can see the shores being blasted by hurricane force winds, huge waves, high tides, and heavy rain. Several towns are strongly urging residents to leave immediately, and some schools will be closed tomorrow. Tom LeMaine is tracking the monster in the News 3 Storm Center. And Tom, how badly is the situation deteriorating tonight? Well, Larry, this uh, storm has the characteristics of a Category 1 hurricane. It will cause tides that will run five feet above normal. We haven't had that situation in several years. 